A few thoughts now on the president's triumphant trip to Paris, where he appeared well satisfied by a lovely state-like leader's dinner. Despite no agreement, no achievement, no prospect of either soon, he's already back in Washington, D.C. tonight. Before departing Paris, however, the president offered his fellow leaders this closing comment, as has become his way. Mr. Obama denigrated the poor fools back here at home who for some reason expected him to act against radical Islamist terrorists and lamented the limited ability of those who elected them to actually, well, comprehend the magnificence of the assembled brilliant world leaders and their devotion to a cause so much greater than the security of mere nations and their citizens. Listen to our president rationalize why he and his fellow leaders chose to stay with their climate change agenda rather than change the subject of their summit to Mr. Obama's unfulfilled promise to, quote, degrade and destroy the Islamic State. For some reason, too often in Washington, American leadership is defined by whether or not we're sending troops somewhere. And that's the sole definition of leadership. And, and, and part of what I've been trying to describe during the course of my presidency is that where we make the most impact uh, and where, by the way, we strengthen uh, our relationships and influence the most is when we are helping to organize the world around a particular problem. Is there anyone Mr. Obama won't lecture? Even his passivity seems to require more energy than he's willing to expend, saving himself perhaps for the pedestrian rhetoric that he spews on glorious occasions such as Paris. Even liberals, not all certainly, but many are taking notice. The Washington Post columnist Richard Cohen, writing that the president would have lost World War II. In his most recent column entitled, Obama, the president who lost his voice, Cohen wrote, quote, It's not that Obama has lost his gift of eloquence. His problem is that he often has nothing to say. It is on foreign policy particularly where he goes empty and cold. His policy, after all, is to avoid yet another Middle East quagmire. It entails the ringing call to do as little as possible. Cohen goes on to say, he is out of words because he is out of ideas. Consequently, he ought to listen to others. They're not the ones who are popping off. He is. And I wish I could say that Mr. Obama will recognize his failure and turn to others for counsel, for advice. But I'm afraid he won't, that he will press on ineptly and just keep popping off. It is the price you and I are paying. Let's hope the price doesn't become exorbitant. Our quotation of the evening. On the inartful games played in Washington and the dull, drab meetings and summits of international leaders. This one from out of town, if you will. Pierre Trudeau, the Prime Minister of Canada, who said, I bear solemn witness to that NATO heads of state and of government meet only to go through the tedious motions of reading speeches drafted by others with the principal objective of not rocking the boat. We're coming right back.